It's David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech University, talking about solids, CE3303. This is a review of a problem that was on our exam number four, uh, involving superposition and solving for a statically indeterminate situation involving a beam. The setup was something like this with a fixed support at this right end cantilever, but it's propped up by a support here in the middle of the span. It's got a uniformly distributed load of 200 pounds per foot on it. Okay, these points are A, B, and C. The reaction at B, Y, and I have a reaction and a moment at the uh, fixed support over here on the right end. So obviously I have one redundant reaction which means I have one more unknown than I have uh, equations of equilibrium to solve it by. So I have to use superposition, also called the force method, to solve it. And the way I do it is by removing the reaction at BY and superimposing those two situations and using a boundary condition to uh, give me another equation that enables me to solve uh, solve for that unknown reaction. So my boundary condition, you know, a big thing is on these problems is to draw the elastic curve, here it's in red, greatly exaggerated. No slope at the support, fixed support, dipping down under the load, getting back up to zero deflection at the point B where the support is and then continuing to deflect downward due to the uniform load after that. So my boundary condition is no deflection at support B. So the I break it up into two parts. The deflection due to just remove the support at B Y at B and uh, just got a simple cantilever deflecting a certain amount due to uniform load. I've got to know the deflection at midpoint, mid span of that cantilever. That's what I call delta 1. And there's a, a table in the back of the book, Appendix C, where you've got a lot of these deflection equations written out for various situations. And I want to superimpose this situation where I take the load off, but I put the uh, unknown redundant force back in, By, and I see how much it's going to deflect, how much a cantilever is going to deflect at that point from an equation due to an upward load, which is that support reaction, and I make those two deflections equal to each other, because I have, in that reality, I have zero deflection at that point. So the equation for the deflection of this cantilever beam under a uniform load at its mid-span is this kind of lengthy one, it's not bad, minus wx squared over 24ei times this term, where x is the distance from uh, you have to kind of invert the image in the, uh, the example in the appendix C, but from the cantilever end, and L is obviously just the span of the beam. So um, L is 14, X is 7. So I just substitute those numbers, and uh, my load, this is W, my load pounds per foot. Just substitute all those numbers in here. As I say, at x equals 7 and l equals 14. Note that there are three columns in that appendix C. One's for the slope, one's for the maximum deflection, which is obviously for this cantilever situation that's out here at the end. And the what's called the elastic curve equation is for any point x along the beam. And so that's the one I've used for here. And it just plug in the numbers. Um, x is 7, l is 14, and do all the math, which I've shown here, and uh, these are all these terms, 49 is 7 squared, etc. Answer is uh, negative 340,140 over EI. EI is constant for this situation. Uh, then I just look in the appendix C, and I get the deflection at this point, um, due to an upward reaction, so I reverse the equation shows a 
negative sign because it's downward but my force is upwards in this example in this case and I've got two equations in there for the elastic curve of this loading and either one of them will work because you'll note that there's one equation for x equals 0 to L over 2 and there's another equation for x equals L over 2 to L so because I'm right in the middle I'm at x equals L over 2 I can use either equation I pick this one once again x is 7 L is 14 plug in the numbers the unknown is my reaction BY which is that P it's upward so I reverse the sign of it it's going to cause the thing to deflect upward plug in the numbers I get that this deflection is equal to 114.3 repeating times BY over EI now I just those two have got to add up to zero so I just write this equation put those numbers in there for the deltas and I can solve it down to 114.3 repeating BY is equal to 340,000 blah 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 BY is equal to that number divided by 114.3 repeating 2975 pounds as I say I always like to use some sort of common sense check what I've got is 200 pounds over 14 feet that's 2800 pounds I know that with this situation most of my loads gonna to go to that intermediate that support B so I got 2800 pounds it's conceivable to me that I could have a reaction of 2975 if I got a reaction of 40 pounds I would think whoa something's wrong so I always recommend a common sense check that passes okay so I know that that's what I wanted to know on the test but it's interesting to point out that once you've got that unknown uh, reaction by superposition then it's easy to solve for the other reactions I just use my equilibrium equations from statics sum of forces in the y direction positive is up gives me I'm trying to solve for cy I can just do the easy math I get that CY is equal to negative 175 pounds or I've written that arrow wrong it's really a downward reaction at at uh, point C of 175 pounds down so it's wrong to write it this way I'm kind of combining these two things but it's a downward reaction so that would make me want to erase my negative sign it's the opposite of what I assume the negative signs means it's the opposite of what I've assumed which is up and then I can solve for the moment at the fixed support by summing moments about that point C 200 times 14 times 7 feet for its moment arm minus the reaction at BY 2975 times its moment arm of 7 feet also opposite signs because one's a the 200 pound per foot produces a positive moment using my sign assumption of counterclockwise is positive the reaction is clockwise so I solve for M is equal to 1225 pound feet